Be part of unearthing Africa's gold. Be part of the Joburg Film Festival. Hello everyone, my name is Sipo Nguenya and welcome to the Johannesburg Film Festival and GQ content series. This is not the State of the Nation address, but instead <laughs> these are chats where I'll be talking to some of South Africa's most acclaimed actors, actresses, producers, directors, all in support of the Joburg Film Festival, brought to you by the Multi-Choice Group. And uh, Mampo Brasia, you are the first person I'm chatting to. Oh. Welcome. Thank you, I like being number one. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping this is gonna be a, a fruitful conversation and yeah. the reason why you're here is to speak more about um, the longevity of actors and actresses in this industry. Right. We know how tricky it can get. It can either be very short-lived or very fruitful for somebody who does it, you know, very well. Right. And, and that's why, we, why, why you're here. I don't Tell know us if about I've done it very well, but thank <laughs> well, you. Look, I'll take I've, it. Seen, I've seen your biography, right? Yeah. And it's very extensive. Yeah. And some of the works that you've done are, uh, are great. But for some of those people who haven't seen you on our screens, I want to say our screens in a long time, tell us what you've been up to. Um, so I've taken some time off because after being on a soapy for like eight years, you kind of find yourself feeling drained and lacking that sense of imagination, uh, trying to kind of like come out of that character for a while so I've been working on different shows um, I've done some work for Netflix uh, I've done a film an international film for Warner Brothers um, I've just shot a film now in Cape Town um, the story of the Millie Vanilli mm. uh, I don't know if you remember yes, those yes, guys yes, yes, yeah yes, yes. so I've been doing that um, that kind of work where it doesn't take up too much time mm. and I can get to be a mom and a wife mm. and just a person um, so, so I guess maybe that's why I haven't been on our local screens because I'm, I'm branching out into the world of the international. Talking about branching out, yeah. you know, into this world of the international, I see that you've also lived internationally yeah. in many other countries and stuff. But now, when it comes to you taking on these different roles, you know, for different demographics, yeah. how do you go about? preparing yourself for that? So I mean it's I kind of it gets back to that question of longevity right I think that longevity is kind of synonymous with evolution uh, and upskilling mm. you have to understand firstly the type of actor that you want to be um, what are you going to input into yourself in order to be constantly changing to be better mm. um, for example just dialects learning different dialects mm. Mm. Uh, research is quite imperative um, go delving into different worlds, understanding like why do certain people live this way? Um, who are they? Language. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I have this incredible fascination with languages mm -hmm. because it really opens up your world um, to, to discover, I mean, like the sh understanding Japanese culture, for example, or um, having lived in the US, mm -hmm. I can now actually play an American because I've invested in the dialects. I've invested in understanding what what type of American women exist, oh, wow. type of thing. So, I think it's about that. I think it's really about learning to transcend or go beyond the paradigm in which you exist. Now, for somebody who has such a great track record, right? Some of the challenges that actors and actresses find themselves in is mm. is, a, is this thing of stereotype casting, right? Right. Because you've played such a wide range, how have you managed to sustain yourself in that? I mean, I think it's okay to be typecast mm. because not everybody is that versatile. Not everybody's a Meryl Streep. Mm. Um, then, then, and that's why it goes back to understanding the type of actor that you are, mm. but also skilling yourself, like getting new kind of techniques, so that you are able to sort of to branch out mm. from from that typecasting. But I think that. Um, that lies in the stories that are told, mm. the writing, mm. right? Um, that, that will give actors the ability to be diverse. Mm. Um, but, but at the same time, I think like, for example, you, you get Viola who had to do The Woman King mm. to get out of that specific typecast. Um, but it, you know, it's literally being either okay with it or finding the stories that resonate with you and you know that you can come out of what you've been doing and be someone else. And that's why for me, I had to take that break in order to, to sort of revitalize my imagination as an actor because I'd been Iris for so long. Even though I played different people in between, 
but it was kind of just like, it became difficult to, to reimagine. And, and I tell me, having to be such a busy actress, and obviously you've taken some time off, you said from our screens, but from a family point of view, yeah. how do you balance that, you know, having a daughter and trying to raise a family while also still trying to Yeah, it's, it's actually quite a tough one. I mean, I was having a conversation with my nine-year-old the other day and she said, I'm so glad you don't work so much anymore. <laughs> and I felt really bad because yeah. I'm like, geez, I'm going back That's, to work, chick. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. <laughs> next year I'm gunning for it. Um, so it's a, it's a difficult balance. But one has to be constantly aware of one's responsibilities and how much you pour into you so that you're able to pour into everything else, into being a mom and, and being a wife. Now on that note of responsibilities, from a, a financial point of view, yeah. right, we know there's, there's a theme that, that seems to come up, come up uh, every time a legend passes away. So yeah. More specifically in South Africa, right? We see how they go and they have nothing left to show for the work that they did, right? Yeah. How have you gone about, you know, trying to, you know, keep a good balance between making the right uh, decisions when it, when it comes to your finances? Geez, I think there are a whole host of reasons and I believe that uh, one, actors are underpaid from that from from the outset mm -hmm. they are underpaid but i also understand that um one has to view it from we are in the business of show business it is a business you are the business mm -hmm. and so you have to um, look at it from that perspective and how you actually deal with your money um, i think that sometimes what happens is that we get carried away with the idea of the glamour and the notoriety, we forget the business side of things. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have un understood that from the beginning and to have somebody who supported that and who actually is in the finance business. So, uh, I mean, I can't count for, <laughs> won't don't say the word. We are, we are but, the but um, I, I, you know, my husband is an accountant, he's yeah. a qualified accountant, he's a wealth manager. So that, that really helped me. I don't know um, how other people go about it, but I think it's something that we all have to be cognizant of. And, and not just the actor themselves, but as an industry as a whole, um, it's important to look after each other and to, to respect the craft that this particular person brings to this medium, because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a team effort. It wouldn't happen. You would, you know, actors are the people that bring life to the page. Mm -hmm. um, if there was no page, there'd be no actor. If there was no crew member, there'd be no story shot on, on a screen. And, and I think that even with the advent of social media, um, actors or people in the industry have now been given this platform to talk about why it ends up this way. And so I think that it's a responsibility for all of us to look into and to change that, to try and change that because it's important for South Africans to be able to continue to tell it, telling their stories and also being able to have a livelihood mm. because mm. what's the point? You mm. can't be like, oh, I'm, I'm a tortured artist and I have no... F no, why, why are we tortured in that manner? Okay. And it, it shouldn't be that way. So I believe that it's, um, it's something that we do have to address and, and try and change it. All right, and then now just talking about diversification, right? Mm -hmm. Some, uh, there's, a, there's a school of, of thought that goes that, you know, a, a gr great soccer player doesn't make a great coach, right? And same goes for a great actor or actress doesn't make a great director or producer. But a little birdie tells me that yeah. you have also now um, dabbled into some directing and producing I mean, look, and, and how's that going? I think it's a, it's a silly concept because we're such diverse individuals, we're just diverse creatures. Mm. You know, you can do whatever you set your mind to do. You, maybe you're not going to be amazing at it. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I think anyone can, can, can go into behind the scenes when they want to. Uh, and it has to come from a place of passion and desire. I, I love to write. I, I want to put down stories. Um, so that's more my interest. That's where I'm really leaning toward, rather than directing and, and producing. I find that hard, <laughs> so, and I'm I'm pretty much in my head. So I I, want, I I have to put things down on paper. 
And, and is this something that's always been happening for you in the background? Yeah, yeah, I've always loved to write. I've always loved to write. So, so can we then safely assume that maybe that this is the next chapter for you? This definitely is going to be the next chapter for me because what is important as an actor, or I think as a human being, is understanding that there's always a next. Mm -hmm. And so prepare for that next and know what that next is so that when the time comes, you're ready for it. And yeah. Now, um, I'd like to think that you obviously are going to be attending some of the films at the Job Film Festival, Yes, of right? course. And the, the theme is Our Stories Are Gold. Tell us about some of the, those golden moments uh, that have stood out for you um, in this long career as, as, as a thespian. Sure, it's, that's pretty hard to pinpoint. I mean, I've been doing this since I was like in Standard 1. Hectic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I think that the moments of gold is when, when God shows up and you'll be on a set and you, 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 you're performing or you're interacting with somebody and it's like those, those moments when God shows up, I think that's where the gold lies. And that is the beauty of being an actor because you get to tell stories of the voiceless. You get to give someone who might not have that platform, a platform. And so it's, it's like living so many lives in one go, right? In one lifetime. Mm -hmm. And in each of those lives, there is a God that exists. And that is the beauty for me in, in what we do. I love that. So before we wrap this up, I also just wanna ask you my second last question because, and I hope this one is also not too tough, right? Um, yeah. What legacy would you like to be remembered for? So I've never thought of a legacy in just one aspect, as in like, oh, as an actor, I want to be remembered as the greatest actor, and I have all these, no. Uh, for me, it's a really, it's on a holistic perspective. I would love to leave a legacy that is of love, that I was loved and I loved in return, um, that I respected the craft, I respected human beings, I respected the people that I interacted with, that I left them feeling that they were worthy and had a place in this world. Um, yeah, my legacy, from, the legacy I'd like to leave for certain is um, of love. Now, as mentioned before, you know, the, the, the film festival is really about trying to develop the, the film and television industry yeah. on the continent, right? In that they aspire to become the premier film festival on the continent. Right. In that said, I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of work that the, that the guys are doing behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, to try and get there. But what would you what would you say is still missing in trying to get, you know, the whole industry um, to, to the levels of, you know, of, of, the, of the global stage? Money. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, money, you, you a whole lot of money. Um, look, I think that also um, imagination. Think beyond your current existence. Mm -hmm and tell stories that are of connection and human relation, because there's nothing more powerful than that. Let's aim to teach, enthrall, and engage the audience in which we do, that we're dealing with. Um, but definitely money, yes. It makes a big difference. Well, <laughs> there it goes, look, I mean, I, I do I, I do work for multi choice and, and this is definitely not something that we are shy of. You know, we we, we really do right. believe in, in investing yeah. into local talent and producers. So right. money is definitely needed. But I think what yeah. you said most for me that stands out is the imagination. Right. Right. Because right. it starts there. Because um, you will reap what you sow. For sure. You know. For sure. So. All right, Mampo, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it, and I enjoyed the chat. Uh, hope to be seeing you at the Joburg Film Festival. Absolutely. Super, thank you so much for chatting to me. That was fun. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And that wraps up uh, our first episode of the Johannesburg Film Festival and the GQ content series. This is Mampo Brescia and I'm Sipongwanya. Check you next time. <laughs>